next slide. The National Youth Science Forum has two sessions, session A, B, and every now and then a C if they feel like it. There's 200 people per session and they're all broken up into different groups. They come from all across Australia. They're all year 11 students going into year 12 who are dedicated to science and are considering taking up science as a career. There's also some students that come from overseas. When I was there, we had three people from New Zealand, a couple from London, and there was a few from South Africa, I believe. On the session, you get to go to a range of lab visits, get lecturers from renowned scientists. You get to explore Canberra. It does have our government, which fails us in a number of ways. Hmm. It has the Australian National University, which is actually pretty cool. It's really big and they've actually got a particle accelerator. Because only 400 people per year can attend, it is quite a rigorous process to get in. First of all, you have to be supported by a local Rotary Club. And for those who don't know, Rotary is an international organisation that supports local communities. So I'm from the Sunshine Coast, which is North Queensland. And I was in quite a small area. So when I went, there was only three people who applied, but I had friends who tried to apply for the 2017 session and they were competing against 20, 30 people and each Rotary Club can only support one. You don't have to go to your local Rotary Club. You can go to a different one. So if you think that there are better odds by going to say a smaller Rotary, then do that. Here's a few hints to get supported. The best advice that I can give you is to be personal. What they do care about is that by sending you to the National Youth Science Forum, they're going to make a difference in your life. You have to get them invested in you as a person. You'll get the typical questions that would be on a job interview that ask you about your resume, your extracurricular activity. My hobby is reading and my other hobby is writing and I'm not quite sure what else I do with my free time you've got to avoid putting that down. So, what I put down was I got interested in science because of its complex nature and because I watched Doctor Who as a kid. So you like science because you watch Doctor Who? Speak from the heart, there's got to be someone precious to you and think about how you could help them with science. And if you bring that up and if you speak from a place of love and care, then it's very rare that people won't respond positively to that. If you do well in your Rotary interview, then your Rotary Club will often fund you. Not fully, my Rotary Club gave me half, which is quite a bit considering it's a three grand trip. I then also went to Quota, who is another group, and while they're not part of the MISF process, if you need help with funding, then local groups in the community will help you, particularly if you've already been backed by Rotary. So I went to Quota. I also went to my school. So after you get supported by your Rotary Club, you've then still got to go through an interview. It was based in a high school in some of their classrooms. So when we first went in, there was a group of six of us, four to six, and we sat down and that was the first stage of the interview. They wanted to see how you interacted with the other students. So when you do that, the most important thing is to be open. If you've ever worked in customer service, then just treat them like customers. You know, smile at them, say, hi, how's your day? Make small talk. This is where you show your ability to socialize and to get along with others. The second half of the interview will be a panel. There's three people and the ratio of them may change. There's normally a Rotary member, a previous NYSF student, and then the final member can be either one of those two. When you go in, make sure you greet them. Do small talk. Like I said, if you're in customer service, treat them like they're a customer and 
be nice, smile, smiling is really important. And when you speak, think of it like a presentation for school. You wanna be using hand gestures. They'll also ask you some science themed questions. Depending on which criteria you selected, I chose to go into physics. So they asked me some general science questions that had nothing to do with physics. Then they asked me for some physics related ones. Some of the questions I got was, what kind of problems would a Google driverless car face getting from point A to point B? And another question that they asked me was, why is the hole in the ozone layer above Hawaii larger than other areas? I had no clue. But they're not after the answer. The answer doesn't have to be correct. They're after your reasoning. So if you were like a maths test and put down all you're working out, except for instead of writing it, you're saying it out loud. Once you've had your interview, it takes a while to get the results. I got them probably about a month later, and I remember getting them and I was dancing around the kitchen because I was so happy. You're in. You're going to the National Youth Science Forum. And there is so little information about it. It's like the whole water sorting ceremony. You're not supposed to know before the time. So I'm not gonna give you any spoilers, but I figured I would give you a few tips to make the most of your time there. When you go to the National Youth Science Forum, you get to select your interest group. And depending on your interest group, you will be assigned a particular group, which will be named after a famous scientist in that field. So I was from Wu, who was a Chinese scientist working on the Manhattan Program. Inside that group, you'll also be given a buddy. My buddy was from New South Wales, and she was amazing. You also get, besides your group, you get your floor group. And the only member that will be in common is your buddy. So your buddy is in both your interest group and your floor group. You have one staffy on each floor. Staffies are the staff members. They are former students from the year or the year before that. The other thing that you can do to get ready for the forum is to get some questions ready. You might not know all the guest speakers who are going to be there, but you do a web conference with CERN, or we did. Um, we also had Brian Schmidt up as a presenter and you're going to want to have some questions for them. You're going to have to do a presentation. You get to practice your presentation skills in front of the people of your group. There's going to be one that you get to prepare for and there's also going to be one that is going to be on the spot. There's other things beyond science. I know, shock horror. There is a talent contest which I'm pretty sure you're told a lot about beforehand so it's no big secret but you can take an instrument along and there's also jamming sessions if you're interested in music and that's a really good way to make friends and just have some fun the best advice I can give you be prepared for the unexpected be prepared for more than science be prepared to make friends for the rest of your life if this video has helped you and you're interested in some of the other stuff that I vlog about subscribe. Also you should go subscribe to James because he really does have some great science videos and he's my chameleon circuit buddy. Thumbs up if you remember chameleon circuit. <laughs> Thanks, good luck with all your applications and I'd love it if you could let me know in the comments below if this video has helped you at all and particularly if you're going to the National Youth Science Forum. No spoilers. If you have already gone, don't hint at anything beyond say coconuts and baby sharks. <laughs>